We're talking about the kingdom of God and the kingdoms of men. I'm going to talk this morning about the non-radical, lukewarm middle. The non-radical, lukewarm middle. Let me read from Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. And to the angel of the Lord, to the, to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, I should say, write these things and say, said the amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works. That is, Jesus is saying this to his church. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish that you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Now, that's not a good place to be with the Lord, I would say. Not a good place. Because you say I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you, he says, to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. And as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Isn't this interesting in this hour? A lot of people think that that's standing at the door of your heart. And it could mean that. But he's literally standing at the door of the church of Laodicea. Isn't it interesting that a lot of our churches are closed? Our church buildings, people can't gather to worship. And the Lord, is the Lord knocking on some church doors today? I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. I've never seen a time like this before. I've never seen a time like this. I've been serving the Lord for 30 some years now. <clears throat> Never have I seen a time like this. None of us have ever seen a time like this. It's an unprecedented time. People don't understand it. They can't explain it. There's so much fear. Even in the body of Christ, there's so much fear. So much lying, so much misunderstanding. But I'm going to teach you some things about the kingdom of God and where you sit with Christ. I want you to fully understand what God is saying in this hour so that you don't get confused. He says, therefore... Be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in, into him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne. Somebody say amen. amen. Lord. Now is that in the... Is that in the by and by when we're in heaven or is that now? That's now. Ephesians chapter 2 tells us that we are already seated with Christ together in heavenly places. We're seated with Christ. So all it means is that you're overcoming, that you have overcome. That you have overcome through the blood of Jesus. You have overcome through your testimony. You have overcome. And you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ with all of your heart. That's how you overcome. <clears throat> There's no other way. As I have overcome and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Father, thank you for your word today. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are opening our understanding, helping us discern the times and the seasons, giving us wisdom, giving us understanding and knowledge that we might help others, Lord, that we might help others who are struggling, who are hurting, who do not understand, and some who are confused, some, Lord, who don't even care anymore. God, we are here to help them all. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn me down a little bit more in the monitors, Curtis, if you would. So, you have a choice. You have a choice. And you can sit 
with the conformists and the lukewarm. Go ahead and change that slide. This is what Curtis brought up last week, and I'm just kind of reminding you of it. That is the church of the lukewarm middle right there. That is the church. That is the Laodicean church. They're just caught up in the winds of this world, the doctrines of this world. They are compromising the word of God, unfortunately. And we see it. We see it. They don't even know what morality is. They don't even know what biblical marriage is. They don't even understand what what life is all about. I believe that people who don't understand the right to life shouldn't even govern. They don't even have a right to govern in our nation. And so the lukewarm middle has nothing to say about controversial things like what you're seeing here. They don't understand that we're not Republican or Democrat. Somebody say amen. So they just stay right there in the lukewarm middle and try not to offend anybody. That's the lukewarm church. That's the Laodicean church. That's, we are in the Laodicean hour, I believe, with all of my heart, and we're seeing it, and it's the saddest thing in the world to see. But there is a remnant church. Somebody say amen. There is an ecclesia. There is a called-out body of believers. And you are a part of that. Somebody say amen. You are a part of that. You feel the glory. You understand and you operate in the gifts of God. You understand fivefold ministry gifts and you honor that. You understand the gifts of the Holy Spirit and you honor those gifts. You honor the fruit of the Holy Spirit. You love one another. You love the lost. You love his church. You love the kingdom of God. You love the things of God. But you have a choice to sit with the conformists in the, ra- in the non-radical lukewarm middle, or you can sit with the transformists in the kingdom of God above all of the rhetoric and all of the chaos of this world. You can choose. You can choose. People are choosing right now. How many know that the Lord is separating the wheat from the tares? He is separating right now the sheep from the goats. It's very clear to me what's happening, and I, I don't want anybody to be left out. In fact, the Lord is shaking everything. He's shaking every mountain of influence. The seven mountains of cultural influence, we know what they are. Government, education, media, on and on and on. Business, we can, we can name them all. But the fact is, is he, and, and the religion, how many understand he's shaking the church today? He's literally shaking the church today. And those people that were serving God on the front end of this pandemic, on the front end of this this shutdown on the front end of all of this. They were serving the Lord. This is a Barna Research, by the way. Barna Re- How many know who Barna is? Barna Research. They do surveys on the church. They find out what's happening in the church. They find out what's, what's happening with Christians and how they're feeling about God or what they believe. And I shared this on Wednesday night. I saw this article. You can go and you can find it on Barna.com talking about how before the COVID lockdown and before all of this pandemic fear started gripping people, Christians prior to this shutdown and the pandemic were serving God. And it gave, it's a survey that one third of those people, even now during the pandemic, don't even watch online, don't even go to church, and they're really not even doing devotions at all. They've just totally fallen away. Now, I don't know if you know anybody like that, but you really need to go after them and tell them, look, this is not the time to backslide. This is not the time to be lukewarm. This is not the time to cower in fear and operate from a perspective that isn't kingdom. Instead, just run with every wind of doctrine and every failed attempt of the enemy to cause you to conform. You cannot conform. Somebody say amen. <clears throat> the kingdom of God is here. We see in Acts 2, and I've shared this before, and I still want you to stay right there. Acts 2.17 says that God is pouring out his spirit upon all flesh. Somebody say amen. In this hour, right now, he said, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. So we don't have an excuse to get be lukewarm. We really have to choose it to be lukewarm. Or we can be red hot. Somebody say amen. We can be on fire for God. Because we sit in the kingdom. We don't have to fear anything. We don't have to operate out of fear or anxiety. Anything like that. 
but we operate in the power of God. And you have to understand where you're seated. You have to make that your reality. Your reality is not in the lukewarm middle. Your, your reality is not Fox News. Your reality is not the Democrat Party. Your reality is not what Nancy Pelosi says or even what President Trump says. Your reality is what God says. I'm about ready to speak in tongues. I'm going to run. Hallelujah. Come on. Your reality is what God says. And we, I'm going to teach you some things this morning about where you sit and what your position is and what your assignment is. Because it is not to allow the world to creep in. Not now. Not in this moment. Not ever. Now is the time to turn up the barometer. To turn up the fire of God. To turn up the zeal. To rebuke the enemy. To give God praise constantly. Acts chapter 2. He's pouring out His Spirit upon all flesh. But at the same time, there is gross darkness, it says. And there's a great falling away. Paul told us about the great falling away. I preached on it on Wednesday night. But let me read you this scripture. It's very interesting to me. 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 4 says this. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of the Lord Jesus and our gathering together to him, we ask that you not be soon shaken or troubled in mind, either by spirit or by word or by letter. Somebody say amen. amen. Don't be what? Shaken. Nor what? Troubled. Because that's what the lukewarm middle does. Or they just give up and they just hide. But here's what he says. Let no one deceive you by any means. For that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. What comes first? What day is he talking about? The day of the Lord. In just three short months, one third of Christians who were practicing Christians... Perhaps they were serving the Lord. Perhaps they were walking with God. I don't know, but one third in America, at least during the survey that, that George Barna uh, took of the church, a sample size of the church, one third. And guess what? He was saying those who even watch online are going to church. That's how easy it is to go to church today, to stay connected. Is what he said. You got to stay connected to God. You got to stay connected to the things of God. You got to stay connected in your heart. Yes. Not out of re religious duty, but out of your heart, your love for Jesus, your love for his church, your love for his work, your, your love for his kingdom. Yes. Now's not the time for your love to grow cold yes. and your heart to wax dull. Before God. Amen. Come on somebody. Glory. What comes first? The falling away. Yes. So is, is this the falling away? I don't know. Is it the beginning of it? I don't know. I can't discern it. But I know one thing. It's going to happen first. Before Jesus comes. And it may happen very rapidly. Like we're seeing it. Happen. And he says in that man of sin. We know who that is. The Antichrist. The son of perdition who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, all that is called God. So when you say, that's God, thank you, God, he opposes that. Is there opposition? Is there a spirit of antichrist in this world? Is anybody, anybody, anybody seeing that happen? Spirit of antichrist. How many know we crush that under our feet? Oh, hallelujah. Christians aren't to cower in fear and unbelief and anxieties. Doesn't matter what's happening. Come on. So that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Whoa, that's going to be an incredible day, isn't it? Yes. Guess what? 
we're going to be raptured. Hallelujah. We won't see it. How do I know that? Because I, if you look at the book of Revelation, chapter 6 and 7, you'll see the church in Revelation, chapter 7, verses 9 and 10, waving palm branches. Before it all goes down, somebody shout amen. amen. There we are in the marriage supper of the Lamb. The prophet Isaiah saw our day as well. Look, listen, he says, he says in Isaiah 60, verses 1 through 6, he says of the church, this is the church in the latter days, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, deep darkness the people, but the glory of the Lord will rise upon you. His glory will be seen upon you. Gentiles shall come to your light. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Did you know that? It's just not him, it's you. Shine. Just like our dear sister said, shine, tell everybody. Go tell it on the mountain. Don't hide. Go share it with everybody. The Gentiles shall come to your light, kings to the brightness of your rising. How many know that the church influences nations? We influence nations, kings. Come to the brightness of the rising of the church. Not Islam. Yes. Not the Antichrist. Yes. To the church. Yes. See, we have this mentality, oh, little old me, I'm insignificant, and we just shrink. We just shrink with all of the insignificant thoughts of ourselves. But you don't understand who you are if that's your thought pattern. You have to understand that when you walk into the room, demons tremble. When you walk into the room, when you kneel, when you pray, when you cast out, when you speak, when you prophesy, the devils tremble and flee. That's who you are. That's who you are. You're not some backslidden, weak, lukewarm middle church, don't want to get anybody upset, don't have... Don't have don't talk about the blood in church. Don't preach the Bible. Just keep shrinking into the lukewarm middle. And the Lord says that he'll spew you out of his mouth. I don't want you to be there. I do not want that to be you, any of us. So here we are, right? Perhaps in the last church age, many people believe that the book of Revelation, the seven churches were ages of the church. And the Laodicean church is the last church that appears in Revelation chapter 3. And it is, isn't it interesting that there's Jesus knocking on the door of the church and churches are closed for the whole year. They've just said, oh, we're going to close. Because they're listening to the false prophets of the media. I'm not saying that there's not a pandemic, that it's not real. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, that, brethren, we can't operate in fear. We have to operate in wisdom, but we can't operate in fear. We can't close the door of the church. When does that ever happen in Christian history? Do we see that prophesied by any of the prophets? Do we read that anywhere in the Bible? I heard somebody say, well, the church is not, the, the church is, maybe, maybe we're transitioning from going to church to being the church. You cannot transition to not assembling with God's ecclesia. You cannot and still be the church. I'm telling you that. The moment you say that God's ecclesia is something that you don't have to be a part of, that's the moment the devil's got you by the throat and he's dragging you around. Because Jesus died for the church to build it. He's building it. You are a part of it. You're a living stone. Somebody say amen. The gathering together. It isn't the building, but here we are in a building. Somebody say amen. But if we're not here, the doors are closed and locked. The Bible says gather. Jesus said gather. We are gathering. Why? Because it's commanded of the Lord. Yes, it is. Yes. <clears throat> but here we are. So we're either on fire or we're in a fear fog. I like that, Curtis. That was Curtis's. <clears throat> we're in a fear. Fear fog. Can't see, Lord. 
Come on. The reason why we're in a fear fog is because we, we, we've changed our perspective to here instead of up there. I'm not in a fear fog. In the kingdom. Come on, Holly. Hallelujah. You're in the kingdom. We're either on fire for God, red hot for Christ, reigning in his authority and power, working with his church in the harvest. Somebody say amen. amen. And at rest with Christ in his glory. Or you're in a fear fog, tossed with every wind of doctrine, every news break. Every political wind and phobia that they can perpetrate on the church. Did you know that the Supreme Court literally, our Supreme Court of the United States of America has said and upheld a decision of the Arizona Supreme Court that said churches can't assemble with over 50 people in it now. But they'll, they'll let casinos. Come on. I'm going to tell you the remnant church ain't going to put up with that for five seconds. I'm just going to tell you the remnant church in Arizona, in Nevada, wherever it is. I don't even know where it is. Nevada. Thank you. They're not going to put up with that. They're trying to close churches down in California. Remnant church isn't going to have that. In fact, there's going to get people, that's going to get people red hot. Somebody say amen. amen. You ain't seen red hot until you start messing with the remnant church. See, the remnant church isn't some weak you know, weak little remnant. I'm just the remnant church. I'm just crawling out. You know, and trying to, trying to make it. No, the remnant church is the bride of Christ. It is the glorious bride. You are the glorious bride of Jesus with all of the authority and power that he has. Because he's given you the rod. So guess what? We do. We start going to warfare. Lord, remove every Supreme Court justice that stands against your church in this nation amen. we wish them no harm amen. somebody say amen. amen just remove them and let them go fishing somewhere yes. Yes. shake them and get them out yes. we got business to do yes. and let's just say that the lord delays that i believe that as the days grow darker the church is going to grow by brighter yes. and that there's going to be awakening yes. because the remnant church is going to come out of that lukewarm fear fog. The institute, many in the institutional church right now, how many know there's a remnant in the institutional church that's as cold and dead? They can't even understand what biblical marriage is or biblical morality is. Entire denominations have failed and fallen to the compromise of this age. And I could just go right down the list, and you know what I'm talking about. There's a remnant coming out. Hallelujah. See, let's assume since you're here today. How many are here? All right. Just checking. That this is the ecclesia of this community. One of the ecclesias of this community. Because the Lord has his church universal. And he has his churches and communities. Somebody say amen. That's what Life Church is all about. We want to plant life-giving Spirit-filled churches, apostolic churches in every community. We planted eight so far. God, give us a thousand. Hallelujah. Give us a thousand men and women who will rise up and do it. So let's assume since you're here today, you're on fire for God. Is anybody on fire for God? Anybody watching on fire for God? Come on, give me some thumbs up. Give me some hearts. Give me some hearts out there. Somebody give me some thumbs up and smiley faces. Give them to me. I want to see them. All right? All right. Praise God. 
So do I have any radical? Go ahead and switch that slide. Do I have any radical, non-lukewarm, demon-stomping, devil-spanking, Holy Spirit-filled believers in this house who sit with Christ up in the kingdom of God? Hey, somebody. Do I got anybody in here? Do I got anybody? Do I got some people up in here? Do I got some non-radical, non-lukewarm, I should say, radical Christians who are not afraid to stand up for Jesus? Hey! That's what I'm talking about. I tell you, there ain't a devil within 100 miles of this place right now. You just shook the kingdom. Did you know your shout is a powerful thing? Your praise is a powerful thing. The word of God in your mouth is a powerful thing. You have power with God. You have power to tread upon scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy. That's who you are. Woo! So tell me. I want to share with you real quick and I'll close. I want to tell you about your prophetic assignments. You got two of them. I like to keep it simple. Because I lose count after three. (laughs) Oh my goodness. I'm having fun. Your prophetic assignment is from now until Jesus comes. How many want to hear it? Do you want to hear it out there? Thumbs up. Hearts. All right, here we go. Here's your two fold assignments that will transform your family it'll transform your life but it'll transform your family it'll transform your church it'll transform your community it'll transform your business it'll transform this region it'll transform our nation it'll transform every nation for every christian who has these two assignments mark one Verse 14, it's the same assignment of Jesus. Now, after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. He was serving notice on the three realms of power, principalities and powers, Satan's kingdom, the rulers of his uh, of Israel, the religious rulers who kept people in bondage, and any prince of any uh, prince or president or any ruler of a nation. He was serving notice. He said this, now after John was put in prison, Jesus came preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Amen. You and I have a mission. We have a mission to work with the Holy Spirit, to love people enough to tell them, to love people enough to encourage them, to love them through their lukewarmness. Somebody say Amen. amen. Shake them with your words and your love. Don't you forsake them. Shake them. Somebody say amen. Shake them. Correct them. Persuade them. Don't you give up on them. God is married to the backslider. He is married to the backslider. He loves the... How many have backslidden before? All the rest of you, I'll pray. I'll pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. I said, how many have backslidden before? Maybe for a day, right? (laughs) Oh, a day. Yeah, I wish it was just a day in my life. Woo! Here's your twofold assignment. Number one, you are all called. You are called to those in the fear fog. You are called to those tossed by the waves in the darkness. Tormented by demons. Demons are manifesting everywhere. Manifesting on people. You have to know what's happening. They're tormented. People in their own sins. And you're to say, come up higher. Somebody say amen. Amen. You're calling people out into the kingdom of God. You're calling them out and up. 
You're calling them out and up. This is your assignment. You're calling them out and up. To come up higher, to come away from the chaos. If you're in the chaos, you don't have to be there this morning. If you're in the chaos, you don't have to be there. Come up higher. Like the Lord said to John, like the angel said to John, come up higher. Remember that? Come up higher. You got to see from this perspective, it's glorious. It's powerful. Nothing shakes the kingdom of God. You are not shaken in the kingdom of God. You operate from the kingdom. Come into the kingdom, we tell them, through faith in Jesus Christ. Through faith in Jesus. There's only one way. There's only one door. And his name is Jesus. He is the one that that died on the cross. He is the one that shed his blood. He is the one that was placed in the grave. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It is through Jesus Christ that I was saved and redeemed. It is through Jesus Christ that you were saved and redeemed. It was him who had who pursued you. It was the Holy Spirit that spoke to you. It was the Holy Spirit that gave you faith to even believe in God. We had no faith without Jesus, without the Holy Spirit speaking to us, revealing to us. So have you repented of your sins? Are you carrying any sin in your heart? Any weight of sin? Any burden of sin? Any unbelief in your heart that's hindering you from coming up higher? Anything that is keeping your heart tethered to this world it needs to be cut the tether needs to be cut the tie needs to be cut come up higher come up higher to jesus where he sits at rest with the father in his throne have you been water baptized i mean seriously not sprinkled when you're a baby we honor tradition we love tradition thank goodness for tradition but that's not what the bible talks about The Bible talks about believer's baptism. Baptism when you receive the Lord and you become a Christian and born again and then you're water baptized. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, Peter said, and be water baptized and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Where is that preaching? In the church. Let's get out of the lukewarm middle. We've got to preach it, somebody. We've got to preach it. We've got to tell people. I mean, yeah, we can take seminar classes on how to be a better dad. Somebody say amen. This is not the time. We've got to be a better witness for Jesus, and you'll be a better dad. I'll tell you that. Get filled with the Holy Ghost. You'll be a better dad. Quit sinning. Can I put it plainly? <laughs> Just quit sinning. Amen. Have you said yes to being discipled? Have you come up? Have you come up? Have you been working for the Lord? Are you ready to work for Jesus? Are you ready to come up higher? Hear your assignments. Are you ready to be the Lord's church? That assembles, not pretends to assemble. People say the most nonsensical things. You can no more be a part of the family of God than you can be a part of a family that you hate and don't want to be around or make fun of. So don't pretend. You can't pretend with God. You're either a part of it or you're not. There's no middle ground. So here's your second assignment. What is your first assignment? Assignment, come up. Everybody say, come up. Come up. Come up. up. Second assignment, you are to speak prophetically. I like those big blue arrows hitting the Democrat Party and the Republican Party. Somebody say amen. amen. You know who Billy Graham was, right? Billy Graham spoke to presidents. Because he was an apostolic leader for our nation. He spoke to Democrat and Republican presidents. Somebody say amen to that. And you know what happened to our nation? Our nation, there there wasn't a whole lot of difference between the Republican Party and the Democrat Party. 
back in the day. In fact, many likened President John F. Kennedy, with all of his flaws, to a Republican today. How does that happen? Conservatives. But how many know that uh, you know, Republicans have their warts? And so what am I saying here? I'm saying that we have to speak from the kingdom to our government and to all of these things down here. Every single one of these things. We have to speak prophetically and we have to speak biblically and we have to help them align to the things of God. Because the things that take us away from God lead this nation to judgment. It leads people into precarious situations and standing with God. We are our brother's keeper. And we must speak powerfully to this nation and to people. We cannot hold back any longer. So we speak prophetically, lovingly to those in darkness. We speak the gospel of Jesus Christ. We lead with the gospel. Somebody say amen. Why? Because the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to all who believe. To the Jew first and also to the Greek or to the Gentiles. See, the church, the ecclesia, is to be the prophetic voice exposing the things of the devil that's leading people astray. Everything, every single one of these things are not perfect. But we have to speak to it. Not hide from it. Not placate to it. Not bow the knee to it. Somebody shout amen. I mean, know that we are the salt of the earth. We don't cancel culture. We transform cultures. I'm about ready to run right now. I tell you, I feel, if I wasn't 60 years old, almost 60, I'd run right now. It's the old Pentecostal in me wants to run. The church, the ecclesia, is the prophetic voice of God. And when we lose our prophetic voice, we lose our salt and our light. We need leaders that are unafraid of all of these things. Bold, strong Christians. Five-fold leaders, believers, that aren't afraid to be thrown to the lions or in the lion's den. We have to highlight the goodness of God to this world. The church, the ecclesia, the fivefold leaders are to speak the truth of God's word to those in authority, those in government, those in education. How many know our education system is ab- I mean, our, our universities just messed up. No wonder God closed them down. These professors who just thumb their nose in the face of God, God will shut you down. It's so sad to see baseball with no people in the stadiums. I wonder what's the, I wonder, listen, I may understand God has rocked arts and entertainment. He's just shaking it. And he's shaking the church too. Shaking business. So we're going to enter these mountains. Somebody say amen. Christians are to enter these mountains. We have elected officials in this church now. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Amen. We have teachers and educators in this church. We have businessmen and women in this church. Hallelujah. Your assignment is to go and speak not only to your business, not only to your peers, what you know and your expertise, but it is to share the good news of Jesus and pull them out of the flame of darkness. We're to go into the mountains and be the light of Jesus Christ. Come on up here, worship team. Come on. Hallelujah. You are not the non-radical, lukewarm middle. You will never be. As long as you're here, you will never be part of the non-radical, lukewarm middle. It's not a pleasant subject talk about because it seems like I'm talking about my my brethren but I'm not as a prophetic voice you have to warn the brethren somebody say amen and you have to warn people this is not the time to be lukewarm this is not the time 
to find yourself outside the church, disconnected from the church, disconnected from the mission of the church, disconnected from the kingdom of God and advancing the kingdom. How do you know if you're connected to the kingdom of God? Because you're actually participating in advancing the kingdom of God through your prayers, through your giving, through your going, through your teaching, through your loving, through your reaching out to people. Have you made your decision for Christ? The lights come down and your heads bow and your hearts open right now. Have you made your decision for Christ? Have you said yes to the Lord Jesus who died for you, gave so much for you so that you can be saved? Have you opened your heart to him and said yes? Those of you watching, have you? Have you given your life to Jesus? Are you serving him? At least you're connected to this. Maybe you're watching at a later time, today or tomorrow, this week. Can't trust your religion. Well, I'm a part of this church. When I hear people say that before they say, I, I believe in Jesus, I know they're lost, as lost as they can be. I didn't ask if you went to church or you belong to a church. I asked if you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart. Have you been saved, born again from, of the Spirit from heaven? Come out of your sins, been washed in the blood. The condemning voice is gone, the shame gone, the guilt gone, gone. Become sons and daughters of the Most High God. That's the born-again experience. That's the reality of the kingdom. That's the joy of knowing God. Praise God. Thank you, brother. So I want to lead those of you watching, those of you here in the sinner's prayer. In a moment, we're going to open the prayer station, come to Christ station. If you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to come back to him, or you want to pray for somebody that's lost, lukewarm, you're concerned about their soul, if you don't pray for them, who's going to? If you're not concerned about them, who will be? Who will be? It has to be us. we got to carry the burden of Jesus for the lost. I said we have to carry the burden. His burden, his yoke is easy, his burden is light, but it's still the burden. Still a yoke. I want to lead you in the sinner's prayer. Those of you watching, you can't come to the prayer station, but you can give your life to Jesus. I want you to bow your head and repeat after me. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins, of all my iniquity. Remember it no more. Cleanse me with the blood of my Savior, Jesus. Jesus, I believe in you. You are the Son of God. You are Messiah. Help me to love you, serve you, follow you like you deserve. I don't want to be lukewarm. I want to be red hot, on fire for you. Help me to burn brighter more and more to those around me. Help me to be bolder, stronger, more filled with your love, and your grace, and your power than ever before. I receive you, Jesus, into my heart. And I renounce the devil. Get out. I believe in you, Jesus. Thank you for saving me. In your mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord praise right now. So I'm going to ask Dave if you'll open the prayer stations. I want you to stand with me right now. We're going to do a declaration. And then we're going to open the prayer stations. Those of you who are brand new, our prayer stations are very simple. We have a come to Christ station where somebody will meet you here. And they will pray with you. If you have somebody that's, that you want to pray for, somebody, one of our prayer partners will be here for you. Over here, we have the... Uh, 
No, this is healing station right here. This is come to Christ, right? Is this? That's come to Christ and water baptism. So if you want to come to Christ, you can. Pray for somebody who you want to see saved. Pray, come. Also, here, water baptism. The baptistry is filled and warm, ready for you to follow the Lord in water baptism. If there's sickness in your body or you want to pray for somebody, stand in proxy for them. You can come here and you can be prayed for, be healed. We've seen so many miracles and healings and deliverances that the Lord is bringing to people. Here, this station is for believers. Spirit-filled station. If you've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit, operated in the gifts, operated in tongues, spoken in tongues, that's for you. That's for you today, all right? So I want you to come. You can be filled with the Spirit today like the book of Acts, Acts chapter 2. And we're all filled with the Holy Spirit. This is the prophetic prayer station. This is for any burden, any, any burden that you have, whatever it is. They operate in the prophetic. They have a word for you concerning some of the things that you're dealing with. So the Lord wants you to come here in a moment. I'm going to count to three, but I want to take you through a declaration. Are you ready? Yes. All right, here we go. Here's our declaration. Say it out loud. Lift up your hands right now. Heavenly Father... Thank you that I am in your kingdom. Thank you that I rest with Christ and I have his power. Thank you that the devil is under my feet. I will not fear what the world fears. I will not allow false teachers to influence me or to take my peace. I will hear your spirit. I will walk in your word. I will abide in your house. I will love your people. And I will reach the lost. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Give the Lord praise right now. Hallelujah.